All right, Dakota's on your left here, uh, Randy Keatley on your right. Looks like they're going to go ahead and sculpt those opening hands. And I already see one of the uh, protocol best one drops that you can have in a deck like this. I see a Cursed Merfolk, uh, Dakota Cotton's opening hand. Great card to start off with here. Absolutely. Just the pinnacle of Emerald Aggression. Yeah, and for his deck here, what you're going to see with Emerald, <laughs> Emerald Aggression is a great way to put this, by the way. <laughs> Absolutely love this. Uh, he has almost nothing over four in his deck. He has the oh, shift yeah. line of Ursula that he can do, which okay. helps him kind of in his rougher matchups. Because if, look, he's, he's not singing much in these matchups. So he's like, look, if, if, if I can't sing, you can't sing either. And so that, that's <laughs> a good card to kind of help with that. But what you're going to see is Dakota's going to try to get really low underneath Randy as quickly as possible. You're going to start presenting boards that are hard for Randy to keep up with, one for Lore. And then mm -hmm. it's going to be challenging for him on like, how do I challenge? Where do I challenge? And stuff like that. And then Dakota's going to have a lot of uh, minimum crabs as well in his deck, too, to help him challenge up into some of these cards as yeah, well. Cause absolutely. Because he will get outsized at times. I could, Yeah, I could definitely see that happening with, with a Ruby Amethyst. A lot of heavy hitters in that deck for sure. Looks like we're going to have great one drops from both of the players here, Chernobyl's yeah. followers on Randy's side, Kirsten Merfolk <laughs> that we talked about on Dakota's side here. Absolutely. Um, Chernobyl's followers, great whenever it you can banish it to draw a card. And of course, Cursed Merfolk, whenever it uh, is, is, is challenged, uh, your opponent has to discard a card, so. Yeah, absolutely. This is one of the ones where, since, since it's a one drop the quest for two, you know, it, it, has no, uh, it has no strength, so it doesn't challenge well into other things, but mm -hmm. it kind of feels bad. You never really want to challenge into a Merfolk because you have to give up a card. Yes. But it's questing for two as early as turn two. That's so much to keep up with. You're going to see multiple cards needed from Randy to keep up with this one card from Dakota. And that's a Sir Hiss that's coming behind it. This is another card that's really important. We see this a lot in the Emerald decks because not only is it uh, good at challenging up into most of the two, three, and four drops in this matchup. Mm -hmm. It's got evasive, so Dakota gets to set the rules of engagement here in this matchup, but you're gonna find that a lot with his deck. He has a lot of evasive creature uh, characters in his deck here, and that's gonna make it really, really hard on Randy to challenge correctly, and see Randy actually doing something like that this turn with, he's gonna go ahead, cash in the uh, the followers for a card here, and then he's gonna go ahead and pick off this Curse Mook book, but it is gonna cost him a Sisu here, which is, that's a really good three drop. So I have to yeah. wonder, does Randy have something behind this? Yeah, not uh, that's not a trade that feels particularly uh, good. So definitely interested. Oh, another one. <laughs> yeah, that's what, I was about to say. I, I feel like a second Sisu is coming here once you've you, once you've discarded one to the Curse Merfolk. But you can see here, Sir Hiss, uh, evasive. You can quest here. You can challenge. You can do however you want. Oh, another fantastic card, Kit Cloud Kicker. Um, whenever he is played, he is able to kick back uh, um, <laughs> uh, a character with one or less strength. And here you're seeing kind of what Dakota's deck is geared to do, right? This is why I talk about it's a low to the ground tempo deck. See, these cards, not super great, right? Like a 2 2 for, for 3 here, the quest for 1. Kind of generic, you mm -hmm. know? Uh, but. It's buying some tempo, right? Like, it just bounced a card back to Randy's hand. That card is not in play anymore. And if he wants to put it back out, it's going to take more time, more ink consumption for him. He's going to have to commit time and effort to put this card back into play. And Dakota's going to keep advancing his board as he does this. You know, questing a little bit here, trading when he wants to. Like I said, he's still got those crabs. So if he needed to, he could trade up into the Sisu at some point in time. Well, a yeah. lot of options for Dakota here. And you can see why this deck is, A, one of his picks for this weekend, and B, why it does well in this kind of matchup. Speaking of Merlin. There comes Merlin Rabbit, uh, one of our favorite ways uh, to draw a card. And anytime he uh, enters and leaves, you get to draw a card. So very fun to bounce him back and forth. Yeah, one of the flagship cards of this deck, Merlin Rabbit. Here, hey, look. And there's the crab. It's almost like I knew it was coming. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is one of the best crab decks I've ever seen. Like We've, we've seen yeah. Amethyst use crab uh, you know, in the past. It's kind of fallen out of favor a little bit. We're starting to see it come into play just a little bit more, depending on you know what the sizing of the characters are in other decks. Dakota's deck is a crab deck. This is a deck where I, I, I believe he's playing the full amount. I don't have the actual deck list in front of me, but he was talking about, yeah, I, I want crabs. I want to be able to use them as often as possible, trade in as much as I possibly can. I want to get all the value out of these I can. Speaking of value, Randy's doing a decent little job of it here. That Merlin Rabbit's going to get picked up and draw an extra card. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, with the Mad and, and also with the Crabs, it's like taking the support dynamic and just mm -hmm. like escalating it. Yeah. It's absolutely incredible to see. Um, definitely. Oh, another Crab! Yeah, so we're seeing it on both <laughs> sides. Both these players are 
Distinguished gentlemen. They know, uh, to, they know to be playing the crowd. Another thing you can be saying about this is uh, the body that's left on this. It is a 3-3 three, three for 3 here, which is really important because of stuff like we see the card in play right now, Madam Mim, uh, Fox, and that one is one of the better cards in this matchup because if Randy ever gets to play that and challenge something that's a little bit smaller, he gets a ton of value off of this. But most of the stuff that he's been able to uh, challenge so far would either trade for it or has evasive so he can't actually challenge it. Yes. Yeah, evasive really, really can gum up the works really quickly if you don't have the counters when you need them. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, it's a, it's a card that costs three. It lets you sing friends from the other side here. And uh, this is really great for Dakota because the crab's already gotten its value, right? It allow, allowed a card to trade up. It's now helped him draw two extra cards here, which is awesome. And then if anything wants to trade into this, he doesn't get a free trade. Everything is Absolutely. going to have to is, everything is going to have to also be banished. And a really timely Ursula here is going to take care of one of those be prepared because that is one of the only cards Dakota says that he really worries about in this matchup. Yeah. Is he, you know, he's gonna to get to a point where they have to be prepared him, and if they don't have it, then the game's a lot easier from That's there. That's good. So, yeah, knowing that that is not directly a threat right this moment is, is very good. But, of course, Randy has three more in there, so we'll, we'll see uh, if, if they chime up again. Yeah, that's a really great point. There's usually four copies of this card in this matchup. Mm -hmm. you, you take your time. Uh, sometimes you might want to wait till turn six, you know, the, when they have six ink to Ursula, just to make sure that you get the, the Beeper right before. But, yeah, you got to fill in your curve here. I, I love playing the Ursula out there for Dakota because it's going to keep, you know, using his ink every turn as much as he possibly can. And he needs to use his more efficiently in this matchup to really, really be ahead of Randy because Randy has a much better and powerful late game. Absolutely, yes. Um, once Randy is able to drop those castles and the be prepared, mm -hmm. he can take control of this board extremely quickly. Yeah, you know, I think you bring up castle. Great point here. Such a powerful card, and it's always on everyone's mind when they're playing against this deck. And that's another reason why you see the crabs are so important uh, for Dakota is... Uh, what does he have to trade into castles? It's going to take his entire board half the time right. to, to do that. So yes. grabs helping out a lot Definitely there. Definitely a, a castle seizure if there ever was one. <laughs> <laughs> but like you were saying, that evasive is so powerful. Sir Hiss, he's pretty much whatever he wants to do, he can do. If he wants to quest, if he wants... Yeah. It's okay if he's exerted. He is under no threat right now. <laughs> It's, it's nice to see it shine in another deck, too. We've seen it a lot in the deck I like to call Lemon Lime. Uh, yeah. The Amber Emerald, yes. absolutely. Uh, yeah. It's it's one of those cards when you see it, it's like, obviously, you know, a 3-1 evasive creature uh, character. That's great, right? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's good on rate. But you don't realize how impactful it is in a deck that has a lot of songs that cost two as well. The fact that it has evasive, so you can just keep singing turn after turn after turn, and they can't really challenge into your main singer. That's awesome. And then when it does actually want to challenge, having three strength is, is so big because... As you see, all the important characters in most of these decks are tradable in for Absolutely. the surface. I, I love seeing cards like this just find that niche, and then they're just so perfect in their role. Three is such a magical number mm -hmm. in this game. It's just like a little bit higher than two, because lots of things have two. But once you get to that three, everything's a little bit uh, more difficult. And it seems to be a very common uh, willpower number. Yep. All right, so we have another crab getting played here. We had a Maleficent get played here to draw an extra card. And what you're really seeing here is the power of Amethyst. I think this is actually what this is going to show off this round is how good that Amethyst package is. And that's yes. something we're going to be seeing for a while. I think even when set five comes out, uh, you know, you're still going to be seeing a lot of these cards be the, the crux of the Amethyst decks. Absolutely. Well, when the bounce package first came out way back when, I remember everyone was so like, whoa. And everyone was struggling to counter it. And now it just keeps going and going. And it just it keeps getting better. It's still relevant. It's still excellent. Yeah, I just love how flexible it allows you because you're, you're seeing it here with Randy. Randy's doing a really good job of this. The fact that, you know, it's it's this turn six, turn seven ink, uh, and he's getting to play two drops, three drops, and four drops all in the same turn, but he's already played them as well. So you get to play a three drop on three, a four drop on four, and then on five, you get to play maybe a three drop and a two drop, right? Absolutely. And then it starts to fill in, and you get to make you get to maximize your ink as the game goes on. Absolutely. Yeah, and it, it really shows these kind of players who know when to play, what they play, what to bounce, when to bounce mm -hmm. it, and doing that sort of two, three, four math um, uh, makes a huge difference. You see, Randy Questing uh, inking a brawl there as well, and... I haven't played this match from Randy's side, and I wonder if maybe he's realized, I think I don't want to be spending three ink to take care of a character here because it's I'm almost trading down in all these situations because a lot of things he's going to be killing if you either drawn cards, have been in play and done a bunch of stuff, or got played for a lot cheaper than that from Dakota. That's a great point. Absolutely. 
We're going to go ahead and quest up here. I think both the players have just evened it up here at eight. Yes. So it is definitely a, a close match. I'm excited to see what happens kind of in the as the further the game goes on when we get towards that late game. Yeah, I think that's a really good point here because we know the late game from Randy's going to be powerful, right? Yes. Like this is what his deck is yes. geared to do. Can Dakota keep up with us? Because, you know, it, it wasn't like maybe some friendly smack talk. He's like, yeah, this is this is the matchup that I want. If I could play Ruby Amethyst all day long, I, I would take these matchups. I, yeah. I feel very comfortable in this match. Uh, Dakota was talking about like he had done tons of preparation for this. This is the one of the matchups he played the most, and you're seeing he's he's kind of keeping up with what Randy's doing here with you know his fox of his own, his Maleficent drawing a bunch of extra cards because this is going to in some ways play out a lot like the Ruby Amethyst Mirror, and in that mirror you want to try to protect your Rabbit Maleficent type cards as much as you possibly can. You want to make sure that you get as many card draws off of them as as, as you can because your opponent's going to be doing the same thing. And it helps you keep parity with ink and card qual uh, quantity as the game goes on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they always say, you know, you can kind of tell if you're doing well. If you have lots of cards in hand and lots of cards in play, it's so <laughs> just a really, really easy way. That's the annoying thing about this, right? When you play against this deck, like, they, they do so many things a turn, right? They're doing, like, yes. three or four actions a turn a lot of times. They're, they're, they're questing, they're challenging, and then you're like, well, how many cards do you have left? And they're like, six. And you're like, yeah. how? You're like, how? <laughs> how possibly? You've, you've played an ink every turn. Yeah. You've used all of your ink every turn, and you have more cards than I do. Right. What are, what are we doing? Yeah. For sure. Uh, Randy, six there. What do we got? Uh, yeah, one of the more impactful cards in practically every matchup, but definitely in this one. Madam can come down and just pick off practically anything on Dakota's side of the board. Really good card for him here. It's going to do a very good job of challenging if it gets to do that as well. But we've seen Dakota really mindful and keeping away from just giving up anything in challenges that he, he doesn't have to and giving away too much up there. And uh, also, we're getting to the point where, you know, Randy has a little bit of an ink advantage. We haven't seen another be prepared. I, I haven't got a good chance to see his hand here, but, you know, we got that one taken out earlier, so something Dakota might have to have in the back of his mind. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you always start getting a little nervous when a, when a Ruby player has, has uh, seven ink. They've always got it. They always, oh. Becky, they've always got it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> At least when they're playing me, they do. <laughs> yeah, I love that we have Madame Mim and Madame Medusa up right here. Uh, someone likes Madams, I guess, when and it comes to this Lorcana, because th these are two of the better cards in, in all of Lorcana, in my opinion. Very, very true. Um, they both get to see so much play. They're really disruptive. Um, just nobody plays a Madame Mim or a Madame Medusa, and their opponent's like, oh, good. No, good, it's yeah, yeah. No, it's never good news for you. You're always, like, crossing your fingers. You're like, please don't have Madame Medusa on six. Please don't have Madame Medusa on six. Exactly. But, yeah. So we have the goat coming out, um, which gives one lore when he enters play, one lore when he exits play. So a very fun character to bounce. We see a uh, goat doing some really, really big impact uh, towards late game in, in at least most Amethyst decks. I don't, I don't know what Dakota's uh, big, big plan will be here. Looks like he's gonna go ahead and follow us up with two more one drops here. One with evasive, one without. Another evasive, mm -hmm. fantastic. Yeah, it, it's. Those evasives, because both of these are pretty small characters, uh, especially, you know, Pegasus, Gift for Hercules is only a 1-1, one, one, and then Hiss with the 3-1. It's like, they're not big, but they, I mean, that Hiss has been here for a long time. Right, it was played, it was played on turn two, right? It it's was. Here, yeah. It's just been doing it. He's been off the side just doing his job. Yes. Madam Mim, you see they're questing as well because there are no uh, advantageous trades from Randy here. Any of the challenges that Randy would make here would also cost him a card as well. Right. And Dakota does have that lore advantage here as well. So he's in the driver's seat right here. We'll have to see if Randy could have a big enough turn, which this leads me to believe I think we're getting be prepared here this turn. I Maybe not. Okay. We're bouncing. Oh, this is, this is a, okay. This is be prepared at home. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to use the Madam Fox to pick up the Madam Medusa. Yes. It's going to get a good trade in. Yes. And then the Madam Medusa is going to come in and pick off another character. I, I know this is going to make you sad. Sir Hiss is finally uh, I, sh I shouldn't have said anything. That's what did it. <laughs> you, you, put the, you put the target on his back. I did. I'm, I'm going to blame you specifically here. You and Dakota both can. Okay. Um, so uh, that... that that did. That was. That was. Be prepared at home. So now, um, Dakota still having the goat. We have baby evasive Pegasus and the Turner Box followers, which doesn't do a whole lot. Um, basically, made to uh, replace itself ultimately. Yeah. 
it does look like Dakota is going to make that choice. And I was wondering, you know, you brought that up. That's a really good point. Is is he going to cash in the card from Trader Box followers here? And with uh, the the two characters that are on Randy's side here, I have to believe you're going to definitely want to cash in a card, unbeknownst what's what's in his hand. You know, depending on what is in, hand, in Dakota's hand here, it could change here as oh. well. And, and here, okay. All right. All right. All right. Sorry. <laughs> oh no no, that's that's a really good thing to point out. Madam Mim plus plus Goat here at this point in time, when you have yes. this kind of lore, this is where it starts to get really really scary because. Dakota might be able to win from here without ever Absolutely. questing again this game. Absolutely. You're totally right because he's now at 17. Um, even if Randy is able uh, to take out some of these characters, um, Dakota is still at a really good spot if he can bounce. Yeah, and you see Randy sees the writing on the wall and he's going to allow Dakota to win that uh, game one. He's going to scoop him up there. And I think it's a really good point to talk about right there that Dakota, the turn before, had for these players. Sounds good. Let's see if Randy could even this one up or if Dakota's going to take a 2-0 here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, because uh, Randy probably didn't know a whole lot about what to expect when Dakota came in, but now he's seen it. He's seen Dakota's plan and he might be able to make some choices differently to be able to counter it. Uh, that is an absolutely perfect point. It's such a good point that you brought up here. You're going to see a much cleaner uh, exchange of his early hand from Randy here and sculpt a hand that is going to be better in this matchup. And what I think I see happening, I can't be perfect on this, is I think we're looking to fight as much as he possibly can in the early game. Randy is looking at that because he's starting to realize my opponent's deck might be more efficient than my own. Right. And I think it's a great point you brought up he, he didn't know what to expect in this game. And I think that is, for everybody out there who likes to brew, who likes to make their own decks, you know, yeah. I know you do. I like to you know, play a little off meta. Um, you can see the advantage of it here. If you Absolutely. pick the right stuff at the right time, your opponent's going to be thrown and not know what to do. And you could have had all the testing in the world, play this matchup 100 times, and then your opponent plays a card you're not ready for, and you're like, oh, I, I don't know. Oh, wait. Yeah. yeah. What, do I do? <laughs> what do I do now? Yeah. No, 100%. There is that sort of advantage to, mm -hmm. to, to playing something unexpected. Um, the real test, though, is if it can stay consistent after the novelty's worn off. That's a, another great point. You're like, okay, look, I've, I've been surprised by this. Now that I've prepared, uh, let me show you the strength of my deck. Yeah. It's something here, and that's what Randy's hoping for. And uh, speaking of the strength of the deck, that's another turn one Gurus Merfolk. It sure is, which uh, that is a beautiful card to open, open a hand with. Great openers from both Strobo's followers. I mean, we're gonna see we're gonna see a lot of this, uh, a lot of the same cards from each other in the first couple turns. Yes. And yes. hey, Sir Hiss. yeah, ju and just like last game, Dakota with the uh, Curse More Folk into the Sir Hiss start, really great for me. And uh, no quest here. It's kind of interesting. Like, I, I think it's great in the fact that he doesn't give the freebie. Uh, I say freebie. He doesn't give the right. challenge to the tr uh, Chernobyl, Chernobyl followers here to take out the Curse More Folk. Uh, I know it would get a card from him, but this puts the, the onus on Randy. It's like Randy, if you quest with your followers. Like, do you want to banish it to draw a card? And then, depending on that, uh, Dakota gets more info uh, on when he wants to quest here. And since it quests for two, he can kind of give up a little bit here on turn because he can catch up so much faster. Yeah, absolutely. That's a really good point. Let me see you inking the Maui to play a Mim. Bounce it back. Excellent. Yep, Snake, really, really powerful in this matchup if it gets to ever actually start to challenge. But we've seen Dakota really, really strict about how he wants to challenge uh, in this matchup and not give away too many good ones as he does go ahead and quest up just a bit here to go up to three. So he's got the the early quest lead, which I think is the way this matchup's going to play out a lot. Yeah. And then he's going to keep those cards coming as the game goes. So the Melissant replacing itself, the Curse of Morfolk, if you want to challenge it, it's going to cost you a card. So we're seeing Absolutely. a lot of card advantage happening here as well. Yeah. Oh, there's a copy of Be Prepared going into Rainy's and, the, and a brawl. Okay, Rainy's okay. doing some board control here. This yes. is what he was missing in game one. Right, and he's like, I'm not letting this happen again. But Sir Hiss continues to stand strong. <laughs> Are you just like Sir Hiss fan number one? <laughs> I love last game. He was a sleeper agent. He just stuck around. He sung some songs. He quested, he quested, he quested. Nothing could touch him. But he wasn't like showy about it. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't too cocky. He's, no. he's, a, he's a humble snake. All right. <laughs> yeah. So we'll we'll see if he gets gets an, another MVP this <laughs> this match. It's it's looking like he might. He's already he's got a great start. If he, he wants does. to, he can pick off the Madame Mim snake as well. Yeah. Lots of options for Dakota here. Like I said, that three is a magic number. Um, it really can do so much against so many cards, regardless of which ink color you're playing. 
Yeah, it seems like Dakota has a lot of options. This turn is weighing all of them. Yes. I feel like these are some of the harder turns in Lorcana when you have a bunch of options and like, what do I want to ink? What do I want to get right? Because I find a lot of games where uh, I'll get to like turn eight and then I'll be like, man, I really wish I hadn't inked that card on three. It is crazy, that butterfly effect mm -hmm. of where you do something small and it comes back to haunt you multiple turns later. Game looks really simple, but it's so complicated and so in-depth on the play. It really is. That's why the game is so fantastic. It's, it's like great. It's fairly <laughs> easy to like come in and like figure out how it works, but the, the learning curve is just, it, it goes so sharp. Once these players, the, the minutia of the details. Ooh, you really good get, word there. Is that, the, is that the word of the day, minutia? Uh, it is or, now. All right. Um, it, makes, it makes such a huge difference, and, and these players just know everything in and out. They can predict what their opponent's going to do in advance, but again... The homebrew. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Durandy's only played it against him once, so he maybe doesn't know exactly what, what is going to happen. Maybe we get some Madame Minutias later? Is that too oh much? My is, that God. Too, is, that too, is that too on the nose? All right, that might be a little too... <laughs> Look, I like, a, I like a good dad joke, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make him when I can. <laughs> That's fair. Speaking of singing songs, which you mentioned earlier, we've got a Friends of the Other Side from the Merlin here. Going to yes. get some extra cards in Dakota. And speaking of extra cards, that's a lot of rabbits. That Dakota's is a board. lot of rabbits. Um, such a great card for middle game with most um, Amethyst decks, just being able to bounce those and get cards. And what did we say? When you have cards in your hand, you're doing good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had talked about this too. It's a great point to bring it up with the rabbits. We talked about how important these can be in this. Like, I, I know this isn't a mirror match. It's not the same deck, but they're no. very similar in a lot of what they're trying to accomplish yes. and do. Uh, yeah, definitely. And very similar Amethyst cards going in and out. Look at all those rabbits. Ah, oh, Sir Hiss. We hardly knew ye this game, uh, but he's he tried been so his good. best. <laughs> yeah. He did, in fact, try his best. He did his best. Took a hair, hair, took care of a snake. And I was like, excuse me. Honestly, there. yeah. I saw, the, I saw the rabbits, and I kept saying hair for some reason instead of care. That's but, fair. Yeah. Hey. Oh my god. <laughs> we are doing. It. We got this. <laughs> Wordplay. We're on it. Yeah. Uh, that's we're it. Like, we're just making a Disney song as we go. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um. Baby Pegasus coming out, another evasive, kind of coming in for Sir Hiss as, as another evasive, moving moving that forward. Um, again, Randy doesn't have a whole lot uh, he can do against that with one card at least. Yeah, absolutely. He's going to have to you know, play something like Madame Medusa on six or something like that, take care of uh, Pegasus, and that, that never feels good. Trading for a one yeah. with a six? No, not so much. And that's one of the things in this matchup I think Randy has to do. Like, like I said, I've never played it from Randy's side, but there are some points where you kind of, you know you're going to get got, right? Like, it, it's like, I, I've got to take what I can take here. I've got to brawl this card that I don't want to brawl. I've got to Madame Medusa this card. I've got to Madame Medusa. And look, Randy actually had a pretty powerful turn here. You know, you got a fox to come in for an advantageous challenge on one of the rabbits there and Absolutely. then followed up with two one drops here that are going to replace themselves and gain some lore here. So that was a very positive turn for Randy here. See if Dakota has a little bit uh, to fight back. Immediately questing with the rabbit, though. i got to believe there's some kind of maybe some bounce shenanigans here. Yep. yep there she is. Madam in snake down. I, I love this bounce package from... for a second. So one of the first events I ever did of this, uh, I watched uh, one of my friends playing this deck for one round. I immediately went and just got the entire deck. You were like, yes. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I'm sold. Uh, I was like, this, this is my jam. I like this. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Goat coming down uh, for one lore. Dakota is starting to pull ahead. Him and Randy were pretty well matched uh, for the first few turns of this, but Dakota making some big moves here. And luckily for Dakota here, we're not going into turn seven just yet because that would have been a little scary to run into both the followers into a turn seven from Absolutely, Randy. Absolutely, yeah, for sure. Randy questing with that Chernobog's followers and banishing it to draw another card. Um, he, what do you think maybe he's looking for here? If he doesn't have a copy of Be Prepared already since there was one kind of uh, pitch so early in the game, I think we're trying to find possibly another copy of it or just some more removal here. Uh, Madame Medusa wouldn't be too bad here this turn. Something to affect the board on Dakota's side of the board, um, which let's see if Randy can do that. I was going to say uh, four. It's going to draw another card. Yeah, I think he's just trying to prep for the rest of the game here because 
it's like what you said. I think he's starting to feel a little bit of the pressure here. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and when you have cards bouncing, they just keep going, and it's a hard train to stop once it's once it's left the station. Yeah, I mean, as anyone who plays uh, the Ruby Amethyst knows, y you can do all this stuff. So when oh, and here's this is a great oh, time to play. Absolutely. For to go to here, this is kind of what I mentioned in game one. While it's not getting any songs, knowing there is not a be prepared on Randy's side here is awesome. And look, I love this from this deck. When you have a bunch of one, twos, and threes, you don't have to throw out Ursula on turn two too often because you have another play or maybe some more one drops you can play. And you can wait till the turn before that pivotal spell, that pivotal song that you're trying to get out. So be prepared, cost seven. You can play Ursula on six, and if they have it in their hand, you can take it out the turn before, and that's a lot more impactful a lot of times than just playing Ursula on two and taking it out of their hand. Yeah. I mean, getting a song is great, but just the intel that she yeah. provides by being able to take a little peek uh, is just fantastic. One of my favorite cards in the game, by the way. Absolutely love this Ursula card. Uh, it, it's not going to come up in this matchup, but in some matchups, there's, there's a chance uh, Dakota talks about he, he can have a problem with some of, like, the Ruby Amethyst decks sometimes or the, the ones that sing a lot of songs with, like, you know, the very early singers. Mm -hmm. And there are some lines where you, like, Ursula in two, and then you, like, pick Ursula up, play Ursula again, pick Ursula up, play Ursula again. Just get rid of all... Yeah, yeah honestly, that, that is such a good strategy against that sort of deck because if they can't get the songs out, I mean, their singers got to sing. They're not <laughs> yeah. super strong. They're not super, you know, the that's song what they is, need. Yeah, the deck is made to sing. If you can keep them from singing, that's probably pretty good. Yeah, yeah. for sure, for sure. It looks like I got a little discussion possibly with the judge or something about uh, what happened this turn. But, okay, so Dakota, in a great spot now. He's got a rabbit and a, and a goat in play, right? Yes. So great targets for him to bounce in this matchup while his opponent doesn't have too many great ways to affect the board from Dakota Cotton here. Also, we know there's no be prepared here. So if be prepared happens, we know it's coming off the top of the deck. Yes. But you can't play as if that's going to happen. You can't look for monsters under the bed. Right, <laughs> absolutely. Looks like Dakota questing. And then Randy bringing out the crab, giving a little boost to Cusco, able to take out that goat. Yep, draw an extra card here as well. How good has Merlin Crab looked this matchup? You know, it's a so good. Right? I'm going to be honest with you. I was kind of not a crab believer. Um, I mean, until the... Sure. <laughs> until... Uh, a couple weeks ago, but now I'm sold. It's fantastic. Yeah, this matchup has just shined. It's, look, it's looked absolutely amazing. And then there's some of the ones, you know, when you're playing against, say, like, uh, you know, some of the decks that go a little bit bigger, you know, they have something like a Tamato or whatever. You, you, you need this to be able to get rid of some of their, Absolutely. their characters sometimes. Because if you look over at the side of the board, yeah, there's there's one threes and one ones and, you know, some mm -hmm. pretty small characters in Dakota's side. Yes. These crabs are working overtime and making sure that they can get the job done in challenges as well as questing. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, he has a ton of utility on his side, but the crab is allowing the damage to happen. Without the crab, there's not a whole lot of heavy hitters. Maybe, I guess, probably one of the higher ones would be Madame Min Fox with the four. That's practically the biggest thing he has in his deck. Other right. than, he has a couple copies of the big Ursula we talked about, that, but there's, there's only a few of those. We're not going to see it a ton. We may see the shift line, but like that's a card that's also... I thought he was going to shift I thought he was, too. I, was I, I, thought, I thought he was, too. That's also a card that it's not going to be as impressive in this matchup as it would be in some other ones. Right, right, for sure. It's not, you know, it's not made for this matchup. Not at thing. all. Yeah. Yeah. Another rabbit drawing another card. I love the grin that we're getting from Randy seeing from him because he's like, look, I'm the Amethyst deck here. You can't do the Amethyst thing, Amethyst thing better than me. Right. Yeah. Or that or he's thinking, he's like, is this how it feels to sit across from this? Is this what I've been doing to people? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. Um, uh, mermaid or Cursed Merfolk coming down, um, which, you know, not as effective as a late game card, but lore is lore at this point. We're just... That's a quick triple quest up here. I think we found a be prepared off the top. <gasps> it looks like we did. That is huge yes, for Randy here. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. That could not have been timed better. Dakota does get to draw a card here. Uh, he had a goat out as well, sorry. So gain a lore here. Yes. So we'll have to see what kind of rebuild he can have from here because he gets to be the first one to the board here. But for Randy, I don't think he cares. That's that's the best possible draw he could have had. Yeah, absolutely. That was fantastic. Oh. Oh, this is so important. I'm so glad that you just got excited about this. Yeah, I did. <laughs> in this mirror match, uh, it, 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 well, I know it's not the straight mirror, like I said, but in yes. you know Ruby Amethyst, if you're playing against each other, if you could force the opponent to be the first one to be prepared, you could be so far ahead if you have a castle 
behind this because mm-hmm. now it's so hard for them to for them to get rid of the castle the turn after be prepared it takes multiple Much. multiple cards to do this like maui yes. can't do it alone it usually involves crab yes. with multiple bounces and a fox and it's very hard to do all that yes you're guaranteed to, to get that that passive lore at least twice so that's a really fantastic also, there's a goat here being played by Dakota as well. So multiple problems for Randy here. He has a rabbit. He's going to you know, draw an extra card here. But you're getting the point. Dakota's at 12 lore. Once right. he starts to get up to like 14, 15, 16, that gets really scary when there's a goat hanging around because you might just you might lose the game from a spot where Dakota doesn't even have to quest, especially right. with, with the castle sitting around. So this is getting a little scary for Randy here. Dakota did, was up to the challenge of uh, being prepared after being yes, prepared. yes. Oh, another castle mm-hmm. on the other side. Um, that's really interesting. So both players have a castle. Um, neither player is able to take out the other player's castle at this point. Um, but Dakota is uh, probably in a better position to do so. See, that's a really good point. Dakota is actually in a, in a better position to take care of this because he's got the goat in play. Let's say he has something like a crab here or whatever this turn. He could possibly take out this castle this turn if you if you had a... Okay, well, here we go. We got a rush card, Peter Pan. Okay. Oh. That's double Peter Pan. Okay. Oh. oh. And a crab. Oh, we my. got all of it. All right, so th- that's going to take care of the castle. Excellent. We're going to quest with the goat here. Yes. Okay. I-, I love this turn for Dakota. He has pulled super far ahead, and now Randy's back in the spot of, you need to be prepared again. Yes, that was so effective. He was able to put so much on a board in one turn. That's incredible. We have more evasive. It's a lot. Brandy absolutely needs to so, be prepared. And here's the crazy part. Even if he be prepared to this turn, he's still super far behind because absolutely. Dakota will quest up to 17 from the castle. The castle. Yeah, God, yeah, castle is so good. I know. I love it. I get excited every time I see it. Okay, trading yeah, to draw, just, yeah. just to draw the card. Yeah, I think Randy's seeing the writing on the wall here yet again. Absolutely. And you can see why Dakota likes his deck into this matchup. I mean, this has looked really good Beautiful. here. Beautiful. And that is a 2-0 for Dakota here. 